of unbelief and reveal truth which is forever perfect. Your words do not create this truth. They merely reveal it. By way of illustration, imagine yourself looking at a picture of a beautiful landscape. In this picture, there are trees, a house, a stream of water, a beautiful meadow, and in the background, mountains and a blue sky dotted with clouds. Now suppose that a colored glass is placed between you and the picture so that the picture appears blurred. Everything seems distorted, and yet nothing's happened to the picture. It is your business to remove the colored glass because the picture is still there on the wall and it may be seen. Mental statements are merely a method for you to use in clearing up mental images. Neither affirmations, denials, nor statements create the pattern of perfection, nor can they change it. They merely rearrange your thinking. If you could rearrange your thinking instantly, you would have an instantaneous result. If it takes time, don't be discouraged, for you are working with a definite principle which cannot ever fail you. Your desire for self-expression is inherent in the divine pattern itself. And it is because you intuitively feel this pattern that you grope back toward it. Learn to trust the intuition within you, which causes you to sense a pattern of perfection in your whole entire life. And so simply, while you're going within and thinking of these things that I just read, Allow your heart to open wide. And take a moment 
and just meditate on those words. And so now, when you're ready, you can open your eyes and be present with the wonderful service that is about to begin. And if you want to just lower or close your eyes, I know that I'm speaking for each and every person as I speak in first person. I just recognize that the love, the peace, the joy, the compassion, the harmony of God is right now fully expressing itself right here and right now. Mm, And I just allow my awareness to just envelop me in recognizing and knowing that if God is through and has all, then I am one with the one. And therefore, all that God is, I am. I express love, peace, harmony, joy in all that I am, in all that I think, in all that I do. And knowing that this is true for me, I know it is true for each and every person that can hear my voice. Each are imbued with that God essence. And in our own unique way, we get to express that love, that peace, that joy and harmony. It is the truth of God, and therefore it is the truth of us. And so from that space and that place, I know that love is the order for today. I make welcome the opportunities to express more love to share, to receive, to spread love. I know that the path is already made easy, and I see with eyes that are God's eyes that show me the opportunity where just a little more love makes all the difference. I vow to be in service of that, in service to my highest and best version of myself, knowing that as I give more of myself, I receive so much more. And I know one of the ways that is being made manifest is in this service today. As my heart is open to receive the message that Reverend Dan shares, I find nuggets of truth that I get to take on, to put on, and to live from. I feel it and hear it in the music, I feel it and know it with each hug that is shared during and after service. I am so excited for what the day brings. And so from that space and that place, I just give great thanks. I give thanks for this center that allows me to remember the truth of myself, the truth of God, and the truth of everything. I'm so grateful for our ministers that continually teach by example what it is to live from and act from that truth. I'm grateful to the ministry of prayer that is holding this center always with love and peace. And each and every volunteer that gives from the heart, that shows what service to this community and beyond looks like. And so for each congregant that has said yes to being here today and sharing of themselves and their gifts, it is all good. And so from that place of pure gratitude, I release my word into that perfect action of law, knowing it is absolutely already done. I let it be, and together we say, so it is. So... Uh, Last week, as you'll recall, well, the title of my talk 
is um, choosing where to give. The making and unmaking of a personal hurricane. And so all of this began when Reverend Stacy last week, um, as part of her talk, she spoke about the hurricanes that we're experiencing in the world right now. And she said, you know, they remind me of the current state of the collective consciousness. The, the current state of how everyone is thinking. And there seems to be this churning and this swirling and this whirling of negative and dark thoughts. And then, with great precision, she left it up to all of us to decide if, in fact, there is a correlation between how we as a whole are thinking and these phenomena that we're experiencing in the world. And I have to tell you, I was just consumed by that idea, and I, I thought about it for several days. And, um, and so as I started to prepare for my talk, her ideas started to kind of come up in my mind, and I thought, you know, I'm going, I'm going to expand on that. And what I'd like to do is take it from the collective consciousness, the macro, and talk about how that might relate to the individual consciousness, the micro. So in other words, I'd like to talk about, and maybe you don't have this in your life, but for those of us that might, talk about the personal hurricanes in our life that are wreaking havoc in our experience. So to begin with, I thought, well, I don't really know that much about hurricanes, and that's the beauty of being a minister, because um, you get to explore so many things as you prepare to speak. And so um, I thought the best way to start was to understand hurricanes. You know, what are they? How are they formed? What do they do? So I brought in a lovely school teacher to teach you about hurricanes. <laughs> I'm our squeaks and I live, which means we have a lot of thunderstorms lately. Some of our thunderstorms usually have rain, thunder, and lightning, and sometimes strong, gusty wind. Sometimes the power even goes out. Good thing squeaks and I have a flashlight just in case. But some areas of the world experience a really extreme kind of storm a hurricane. Hurricanes are big, powerful storms that have strong winds, and I mean strong. In order to be considered a hurricane, a storm's winds have to be blowing faster than 119 kilometers an hour. That's faster than a car zooming down the highway. Sometimes you'll also hear this kind of storm called a cyclone or a typhoon, but they're all just different names for the same thing. From space, many hurricanes look like this. Big, swirling storms that have a really cool shape. That's right, Squeaks. This hurricane looks a little bit like a circle. The clouds wind around a space in the center of the hurricane, called the eye. It even sort of looks like an eyeball. Now, a hurricane shape is pretty cool, but it's not the only thing that's special about this kind of storm. Everything has to be just right for a hurricane to form. It's kind of like a puzzle. The first piece of the hurricane puzzle is warm ocean water. The water has to be at least 27 degrees Celsius, or about as warm as a swimming pool for a hurricane to form. The warm water causes the air above it to warm up and rise high into the sky. The warm air is very humid, which means that there's a lot of water in it. As the air rises into the sky, other air rushes in to take its place. The air that rushes in gets warm and humid too, and then it rises high into the sky as well. As the air rises, it cools, and clouds start to form. Lots of them. High in the sky is also where we find the second thing that's important for making a hurricane. Wind. And not just any wind. The wind that helps make a hurricane has to be calm and steady. It can't be the kind of wind that blows really hard for a moment or two and then calms down again. If there are sudden gusts like that, the storm can get blown apart, kind of like how a candle gets blown out. But if there's warm, damp air along with those steady winds, and it stays like that for a few days, the rest of the pieces that make up a hurricane 
fall into place. The steady winds push the growing storm over the ocean, and the warm water gives the storm energy. It causes more air to rise, more clouds to form, and the winds inside the hurricane become stronger. In fact, the only place that is not very windy is in the hurricane's eye. It's actually very calm in the eye, even though it's right in the middle of the storm. As it grows, the hurricane also starts to turn. It spins around with the eye in the center, kind of like a top. As long as hurricanes have that warm air for fuel, they can keep going and keep growing. But when they reach land or pass over cooler water, they lose their warm air, so they start to fall apart. Hurricanes usually leave behind a lot of rain, though. Sometimes the rain can last for days. They also can push a lot of ocean water onto the shore, which can cause a lot of floods. But people can prepare for hurricanes, especially if they know when they're going to happen. For example, most hurricanes near North America happen between May and November every year because that's when the different pieces that make a hurricane fit together the best. And scientists have lots of tools to try and track hurricanes. They use what they know about science to make really good guesses about where they'll pop up, where they'll go, how big they'll be, and how long they'll last. And if you live or go on vacation in a place where hurricanes might happen, you can be prepared too. You can talk with grown-ups about what you can do if a hurricane happens. That might mean bringing in things from outside to protect them from strong winds. Or it might mean helping to prepare a kit with food, water, flashlights, and a radio. Speaking of flashlights, I know mine can use some new batteries. Come on, sweets, let's go to the store to get some new ones. Thanks for joining us on SciShow Kids. If you want to keep learning and having fun with Squeaks and Me, you can click the subscribe button, and we'll see you next time here at the fort. <laughs> Hmm. Now, now before we move forward, there's a, the most important point in that that I want us to remember in the back of our minds, and it's this. Our science teacher, who I would love to have whatever she's drinking, <laughs> uh, and their little friend squeak, um, but she said this. As long as the hurricane is over warm water, and as long as it continues to feed its core with warm air molecules, the hurricane will continue, and I'll use her words, the hurricane will continue to keep going and growing. And then, and I'm gonna paraphrase a little bit, but this is what she said. But when the hurricane reaches the land or moves over cold, cool water, it no longer has any warm air to feed off of. And rather, cool air molecules begin to take their place, and the hurricane begins to break apart. So what she's telling us is that the hurricane and the conditions it creates and the devastation that it creates does not change until the earth stops feeding it warm air and instead begins to feed it cool, dry air. <laughs> now the stage is set. Because when I watched that video, I thought, oh, what a great analogy for how we create hurricanes in our own lives. So a personal story. I was dealing with a personal issue in my life. And you know, at first, um, one of those thoughts would kind of come up. I have one of those little air molecule thoughts of my problem. And uh, I would just kind of think of it, and then it, I would just kind of move, move on. But over time, these thoughts kind of kept presenting themselves. And there were more and more of them. And I began to take notice of them. And I began to focus on them. And so I began to pull these thoughts up into my consciousness. And just like a hurricane, that made room for additional like thoughts to come into my mind. 
And so all this time, I'm focusing on these thoughts, I'm thinking these thoughts, I'm fueling the core of my consciousness with these problem thoughts, these warm, moist, heated problem thoughts. And so I'm pulling them up, pulling them up, and then just like a hurricane, those thoughts begin to come together in the form of belief clouds. And so now in my consciousness, I have these clouds forming. And what happens then is these clouds begin to cast a shadow over my consciousness. These clouds begin to block my ability to see the truth. And after a while, there's so many clouds, it's just real gloomy being around me. <laughs> Pretty soon what I discovered as I look back, my entire mind was filled with my problem. Got to the point where I could barely think about anything else. And unfortunately, or fortunately, we are surrounded by the winds of the law. And so the winds of the law blew in and took my hurricane and blew it into the shores of my life. This one, what started with this one tiny thought was a gargantuan of a hurricane and the law took that hurricane of thoughts and beliefs and translated that into effects of my life. And so now I had this hurricane wreaking havoc in every area of my life. Isn't that special? Wow. <laughs> As a minister. <laughs> and at one point, I was so overwhelmed with this problem. And see if you can relate to this. But my hurricane, which was a very specific kind of, you know, focusing on a specific problem, but that hurricane began to wreak havoc in every area of my life. Now see if you relate, because the more I worried about it, and the more I thought about it, and the more I was in the storm, and the more devastation I saw, wouldn't you know the hurricane decided to show up as a condition in my body? And you think, well, you know, isn't the law specific? Doesn't it just, you know, wouldn't it just affect that one area? Well, I don't know. Go to Florida. <laughs> Go to Texas. Those hurricanes move across the land. So this hurricane is moving through my life, and all of a sudden, in the span of one day, I had this condition in my body where this side of my face was so painful. My, my throat, my ear, so painful. I, could, I couldn't even swallow. I couldn't even touch my <coughs> ear. And you, you, you know, you know when you, you know, you're kind of starting to get sick and in the back of your mind, you're like, oh my God. And I could just feel this coming into my body. Well, in all of that, I made one other fatal mistake. You see, I'm not much of a horror movie fan. But my husband, huge horror movie fan, lives for horror movies. Now, we finally got to a point where there's an agreement, you pick a movie one weekend, and then the next minute, I get to, you know, the next weekend I get to pick a movie, which, by the way, has never happened. <laughs> and, um, so several weeks before, I promised Paco that on this very night when all of this is going on, 
I would go see the new Stephen King movie. <laughs> now, thank God that there was a little time before the movie, and I went into my den, and I did spiritual mind treatment, also known as affirmative prayer. I did all five steps. Why, I looked like Juanita McCoy. My prayer was as smooth as butter. I claimed clarity around this issue. I claim direction and guidance to move me through this issue. I claimed a different condition, a different outcome. I affirmed a different way of thinking. And of course, I claimed healing for my body. So, we go to the movies, we get in the movies. I'm not feeling that great. I'm sitting in my chair. <laughs> <laughs> and then, Russell, the movie began. Oh, no. <laughs> well, if I have to go through it, you have to go through it. Jesus, who is a religious scientist. So no offense to my Christian friends, but at one point, I yelled Jesus' name out loud. Like the first part and the second part. And then followed it up with a really strong GD word. And we were with a group of people, and Alba, my friend, leaned over, and she said, oh, that was very nice, Pastor. <laughs> So I go to this movie, and I am telling you, I am scared, and then they had parts that were really funny, so I laughed, and then I would be horrified, and then I would be mortified, and then I would be absolutely disgusted with even being there, and then I'd be crazy, and then I'd laugh, and then I'd scream, and all of a sudden, I went, oh my gosh, I don't feel anything on this side of my face. And I, I thought, oh my God, 
I had my ear, my throat, pain free. And words came through that were so audible. And it was, you are healed. Mm. I was elated. And I remember going home, got into bed, and then laying in bed. And of course, I'm waiting. I got eyes everywhere because I know that damn clown is <laughs> in the sewer system. <laughs> and I went into prayer and I went into contemplation and I was contemplating this problem and I contemplated the hurricane that I created and the condition and then I, my prayers that were so eloquent like Juanita's and then, and then and then I thought about this healing, and I said, what am I to learn from this? Can you imagine how painful it is to live with pain? Because this goes on all the time. I said, what am I supposed to learn from this? And there were two lessons that presented themselves. Now, the first lesson came through, and it was short, sweet, and crystal clear. And it was this. You never, and you know this, you never solve the problem at the level of the problem. Let me restate that. You never solve the problem at the level of the problem. See, the only thing that you hear when I say that, all you hear is the word problem. All we're talking about, all we're emphasizing, all we're focusing on is the problem. This issue I was struggling with, this problem in my life, Ernest Holmes never said, Reverend Dan, I want you to think about the problem. I want you to keep thinking the same way, and your life will change. Ernest Holmes said, not just to me, it didn't didn't say Reverend Dan. (laughs) However, I may have wrote, you know, I may have written that in my book to do a special. But Ernest Holmes says, change your thinking and your life changes. Change your thinking, change your life. The human species never learn to walk on the earth when it stayed swimming in the mires of the ocean. Humankind never learned how to fly by staying on the ground. See, for something to change, something has to change. This little gem in my contemplation came up, it was this. The infinite mind said to me, You know the old adage, if there is a will, there's a way. The mind said to me, you're a religious scientist now. So here is a new adage for you. If there is a thought, the law has a way. If there is a thought, the law has a way. You gotta choose the right thoughts. You gotta choose the right words. You must always be checking in with your thinking. You must constantly be choosing where to give. Are you taking your thoughts, choosing thoughts to give to the law to create a hurricane of what you do not want? Or are you choosing the thoughts to give to the law that will create that sunshine-filled day of what you do want. If you want the hurricanes in your life to dissipate, we've got to stop feeding it those warm, moist, problem thoughts And instead, we've got to feed it something different. Those cool, dry, positive, life-affirming 
thoughts of what we want. Yes? Yes. Okay, you're still awake. That's a good sign. <laughs> now, the second lesson that came forward was this. Rev, what you don't understand is that movie was a gift. And I said to the universe, if you're giving gifts out, I would show something different. <laughs> because, you see, but I did treatment. I did my prayer work, and I released it to the law. And then I went to the movies, and for the first time in a long time, I did something I hadn't done in a long time, and that was for the span of two hours, I never thought about my problem. I never questioned whether the law was working on my problem. I never negated my prayer work with bringing up the problem. I went to the movie, and without even knowing it, I gave the law the room to bring to me the healing of my physical condition. I got out of the way long enough that the one infinite mind could present these learnings to me. And then what is so exciting is to see this problem, this issue, that was sort of in my life is now dissipating. Just dissipating. The best way to change your life? Know what you want. Declare what you want. Turn it over to the law. And then get your big, bloated butt out of the way. <laughs> You know, if you were so good at solving all of your problems, this church would be empty. Okay? So we're still learning. And I think the best instruction for this point is out of, of course, Dr. Holmes, our founder, his epic work, The Science of Mind textbook. I've read this before, but it's worth reading again, page 271. He says the student should take time every day to see his or her life as he or she wishes it to be. To make a mental picture of their ideal. <clears throat> they should pass this picture over to the law and go about their business with a calm assurance that on the inner side of life something is taking place. There should not be any sense of hurry or worry about this. Just a calm, peaceful sense of reality. <coughs> Let the law work through and express itself in the experience. There should be no idea of compulsion. We do not have to make the law work. It is its nature to work. In gladness, then, we should make known our desires, and in confidence, we should wait upon the perfect law to manifest through us. Get out of the way. I leave you with one more thing. Our hyperactive little science teacher <laughs> tells us that hurricane season is from May through November. Well, I have news for you. And this comes from the National Geographic Centers for Spiritual Living. <laughs> and it is a hurricane warning. And it says this, the potential for a hurricane to a to occur in your life is prevalent in every moment of your life because we're always thinking, because the law is always working, because we always get what we think about, yeah. always. 
always. Now, if we do it right, I can promise you, you don't have to go see it. <laughs> but if that's what it takes, please call Paco. He'd be happy to take it in any horror movie you need so you can get your what? Big bloated butt out of the way. Namaste. I love you very much. Okay, so let us just hold hands and connect. Take a deep collective breath. And as we share the same air, let that be a remembrance that we share the same God. That there is only one, one power, one presence, one energy, one infinite divine mind. There is only one life, it is God's life, and it is my life now. And what I know to be true for me, I know to be true for each and every person that hears my voice. That the life of God is expressing itself through each and every person. And so as I stand in these truths, I now make my declaration. And I just declare that right here and right now, each and every person takes the steps to remove the hurricanes from their lives. That at this very moment, each person replaces the warm, moist thoughts of their problem and replaces them with the dry, cool thoughts of the life they want. What I know is that if there's a thought, the law has the way. And so I celebrate. I celebrate today. I celebrate being alive. I celebrate this teaching. I celebrate that each and every person here arrives to their next destination safely. So I give thanks for it all. And now I simply release my word into that perfect law which has everything it needs to make my word a reality. And so I let go, I let God, and together we say, yes. and so it is. to me right now. Something wonderful is happening to me right now. I know this in my mind. I know this in my mind. I feel it in my body. I feel it in my body. And so it is. And so it is.